So this afternoon is part of our ongoing series of webinars for Microsoft, and we're going to be focusing on accessibility tools. Microsoft have gradually been expanding those across the years to quite a few different ways to support learners in your school, also to support staff and parents in engaging with the school. So this is the, this is episode four of the Fuel the Classroom series, and as usual, if you've got questions, either pop them in the chat, I've put a message there for you already, or we'll have various pause points, particularly today as we go through different types of learning tools, looking at how they engage with different subjects in the curriculum, and I'll invite questions at each stage. We are again today going to be offering you the chance to become an MIE, so you will get your MIE code at the end of this session. The MIE code can be redeemed in the MEC, the Microsoft Education Centre, and the Microsoft Education Centre you can get to by following my link, and I'm just going to drop that into the chat now. So as usual with these sessions, if you've got an account, can you log yourself in? If you don't have an account, can you follow the instructions on screen and click on the link I've just placed in the chat, and that will take you to it. So either log yourself in ready to redeem the code later, or if you haven't got one yet, can you sign up it's quite easy to do you go to the page that i've got in the link go to the top right hand corner click sign in and then after you've signed in you'll later get instructions about how to redeem the code i'll just give you a minute to do that and then we'll continue with the presentation All right, we'll continue. So as you may or may not be aware, the Microsoft Education Center, or it's called the MEC for short, is a great place for you to go to. And what you can pick up there are lots of self-study courses. Also, by coming along to events such as the one we're running today, we'll cover various aspects of courses or learning pathways, which are made up of separate courses that you can visit in the MEC, and that will help you to become a certified MIE certified MIE, you're really on your journey along a, a lifelong pathway of learning, particularly with other Microsoft courses that you can engage in. And each one of you are going to be on a different journey as far as your school and what's required, depending on the pupils or the area you live in. But if you wish to, after Christmas, we'll be running from January onwards uh, an MIE expert course, and that will support you in submitting your application to Microsoft, which will be a sway. And then you could possibly qualify as an MIE expert for your school, and also it helps to move you forward in your own professional development. That might be to look at how to get your school to become a showcase school for Microsoft. But there's various other ways that you can take your personal such as you can become an MIE fellow or an MIE trainer if you want to and deliver sessions similar to this to other schools. So there's lots of options about where you go from there. We'll come back to the MEC and also the code a little bit later, but now we're going to come across into today's session. We've got quite a few different areas we're going to look at for accessibility tools. We're going to touch upon Immersive Reader, and that's embedded in lots of different places. We're going to have a quick look at Office Lens and then go into Microsoft Maths Tools. We'll have a look at Microsoft Translator. Then we'll go and look at uh, PowerPoint and what it can offer in the way of things like Narrator and PowerPoint Live. We'll also dip into captions that can be used in various different Microsoft products. And all of that will be how to personalize learning for pupils, how to make sure that they can access it more easily, but also how to make sure that you can 
courses as a single resource and then maybe the pupils can look at adapting it through the accessibility tools that they've got available to them there'll be question and answers throughout so i'll have lots of different pause points and you can either just unmute your mic and ask but please remember this is being recorded or if not pop it in the chat and i will just respond to you from your written question in the chat with the classroom you've got lots of different options available to you and it links into as i said different areas of the curriculum so things like immersive reader are not just limited to maths and english i would say immersive reader i would use in teaching every single subject in the school because regardless of what you're doing it makes the text on screen open and accessible for the pupil or for the student if you're in secondary school you've got things like maths tools now yeah by its very nature it's going to lend itself to delivering maths and particularly the number element of maths but i know that i've used it when delivering design and technology and other subjects such as science so the accessibility tools we're about to discuss today, although they can link into very, very different aspects of the curriculum and also the pastoral delivery that the school has within its remit, they aren't bound sometimes by their definition. And I've seen teachers be really creative with these tools once they've got them in their hands and start to bend them and manipulate them and use them for all different purposes across the school. The idea is that it not only increases the access, but it increases the mobility of the, the content and it doesn't have to stay within that one area. It can transfer and get across the boundaries. We have quite a visual chart that is delivered every so often by Mike Tholson. Uh, we have worked with him before at Turn It On and he's spoken to our last cohort of MIEEs. He's also a guru and an advocate of accessibility for learning. And what he does every so often is he updates this periodic table. This table in itself will give you access to where to find different tools and what products they're available in within the Microsoft products. So, for instance, if you are going to look at the first First one there which is about reading and writing and getting into written text as you can see it's pretty much in all the versions of OneNote it's there in Word for most versions uh, it comes into Outlook Teams and into the into Flipgrid which we're going to look at in our next session but it doesn't have to be that you can only use it in a single app in Office 365 a lot of these apps and a lot of these functions cascade across the whole of Office 365 and it is only expanding. The first time I ever shared this with a school, it was minute. It was just over to the left hand side. There was a very small selection of apps and it's growing all the time. So you will regularly see Mike update this chart. And what we want to emphasize is that probably if it isn't available yet within an app that you use is going to be available very soon microsoft listened to feedback in this area quite readily and if you know that you've got an app and you want to get it in there in either in the office suite or in uh, in office 365 and teams there's lots of feedback buttons use those feedback buttons to make suggestions about where you would like to see them develop the accessibility tools next and they do often listen. The reason that a lot of these apps here now have their functionality built in is due to requests from people in schools or education colleges saying, look, I need this because it's really important for my pupils and my students. And Microsoft have listened and they've built it in. So we can break it down into the various learning needs that our pupils may have. And all the time they're thinking of new ways to link into the challenges that you face on a daily basis in the classroom or with pupils that you really need to support so that they can access the learning and really unlock the full potential they have and the idea of the learning tools is that you can tap into all of these different learning needs and make sure that you can fulfill them more easily and it doesn't also become too onerous on the school and as they're built into Office 365, the other great thing is that you don't have to pay any additional licenses. There's no additional fees. You don't have to unlock something by buying an upgrade. They're just there. And until you find out about them, I often get teachers say to me, oh, I never even knew it was there, Martin. But once they do, it's then almost like a revelation. It's thinking, well, how can I use that in my classroom? Or how can I use that with my intervention group? And how is it going to let them get hold of what I'm trying to give to them. And the challenge even greater still with recent times and the complexities that we are, are currently facing is that we might be delivering blended learning. We could be delivering entirely distance learning depending on our location in the world. And these tools just help further still 
enable the pupil if they haven't got the teacher with them to get the tools that's going to help them to be successful in accessing what you're asking them to engage with and for instance if it was a, a set of maths questions and their reading level isn't particularly high and they're going to struggle with a text on the screen it shouldn't be that the text dictates to them that they can't answer the question and the learning tools will support them in getting that read to them so they could just get on with the business of answering the maths question and that's what we're about this afternoon is unlocking the potential in these pupils and using the microsoft learning tools to do that so there's a variety of them available. Immersive Reader is probably going to be the one that you will use most frequently, and it will also be the one that we visit first. But you've also got things like PowerPoint Live, which is becoming really popular, and certain captioning in different Microsoft products is really making it easier for pupils to watch. They may be deaf, or they may have some sort of visual impairment, and then the text can be larger on screen. So there's various different ways that these these tools will help. We're going to break it down into four areas this afternoon. We're going to look at reading, writing, maths and communication, and then we'll have a look at the tools that fit most readily into that section. But don't think they have to be pigeonholed because they do lend themselves across these boundaries. So reading first, Microsoft works around the globe with different national associations or global organizations and the immersive reader tool that's been developed has been developed in conjunction with various different organizations and the dyslexia association has helped them greatly with developing the immersive reader tool the passion from mike at the beginning was just not to have pupils in your class that are sat there looking at something and it makes no sense to them and it might make sense to others that we want every single pupil in the classroom to be successful and find it as easy to get to the learning content as everyone else. So with that, the immersive reader's got features to read text out loud. You can change colors of backgrounds. You can adjust the fonts. You can mark up parts of the speech. You can put, pull out things like syllables. You can narrow down the text on screen to have line focus. You can use translations. You can also embed picture dictionaries. And we'll look at those in real time in just a tick. So the, the navigation itself is accessed from the top right hand corner and all those features that I've just described with you are from there. So I think it's probably an apt point to duck out of the presentation and swap screens for you and come over to a demo version of Immersive Reader. And I'm going to share Immersive Reader inside Teams for you this afternoon. But as you will see in a little bit, it doesn't have to be the only place that you pick up Immersive Reader. Immersive Reader is available in lots of different places. If I jump across into Teams, and in here I've got my class team. So it could be that you're posting and in posts, they pupils may not in primary school have their parents to read something and there's a, a lot of text on the screen. So one of the first things you could do is in posts as a pupil, you could go to the ellipses at the top and then you could use immersive reader here. An immersive reader would turn that text, which is really dense and maybe hard to read for them, and read it to them or just change the words so that they can be more readily understood because there's a picture of the word on screen. There's other places that Immersive Reader is displayed in Teams and it might be here in assignments. So if I've got an assignment and I've used this one of the prior sessions, it might be around a story starter. And in that story starter, I, I want to understand what that assignment looks like. So as a teacher, I can also view it over here in Teams and I might go into reading that assignment itself. So let's try one in here. I go into 3D shapes and I want to I want to view that assignment itself. So let's swap into here and I might want to open up student work and you'd have your text there that hadn't quite worked as i wanted it to so i'm going to go over to assignment i'm actually going to make a new assignment i'm going to make a test one instead um no in fact let's skip that you can do it in assignments but it doesn't look like it's playing ball at the moment let's just use it over here we'll go into immersive reader so here i've got my harvest festival notice so here is the text of when i made the post and then down the bottom here it's going to read what Martin i would say Tuesday, the 13th of October, 
So as a pupil, I maybe couldn't read that by just having it displayed in the posts, but by selecting the immersive reading tool, you will be able to get them to be independent in picking up that tool and using it in different areas in Teams. We've discussed about having text preferences. We also said about grammar options and also reading preferences. So we'll look at text preferences first. It may be that I need that text to be larger on screen. So I can quite quickly adjust that for me individually, but what it doesn't do is affect the text for everyone else. So that's of the correct comfort level for me. I can see that that's better. I can either read that now or I can have it read out to me and I can see what's being highlighted in, on the screen. I can decrease or increase the spacing between each lines so I may want to have more of a spacing so it's spaced out on screen it doesn't look too cluttered for me or I can take that out At the moment I've got in it in Calibri if it made sense for me to have it in um, in Sitska or maybe you can have it in Comic Sans is more pupil friendly you can if I was visually impaired and I needed a different color it may be I need a pale yellow I can then implement that pale yellow so that that color is there in the background and every single pupil could have a different setting applied it would leave the original one touched but for them it's how they need it I can keep it with the source formatting in other words how it was originally or I can adjust it so that I turn the source formatting off so there in text preferences I can change the text on screen and I can make it suit my individual needs in grammar options if you are teaching English in the UK you may not want to show them this is if they're doing work in spag or something in a primary school but you can break words up into syllables so it will spread them out with the dots in between so you can actually pronounce it and talk about it as syllables you could turn that off as well if you wish you can also highlight in the text if I wanted adverbs on, but I wanted adjectives off and I wanted verbs off, I can switch those on and off, but I could also label them up in the text as well. So there's my nouns and there's my adverbs. Or if I didn't want it and I just wanted colours, I can switch that off. So it's for English, it's particularly useful. But if they're just trying to understand the technical aspects of language, that can be useful too. On the side there, the next option we've got is reading preferences. We spoke about line focus. If you've got dyslexia and maybe those those words and sentences are jumping around on the screen for you, you can narrow that line focus so it's, it's on the one line. And when you press the read button, it will then change the line that's being read so that you don't have to worry or get distracted by and you can move up and down those lines it's absolutely fine you can go backwards and forwards you've got complete control of that and when you want to read it but it's there for you if you needed to enable it i'm going to switch that off so we can see the whole screen i've also got picture dictionary on at the moment but if i then click on a word i can either have the individual word read to me or if I then click on a word where there is a pictorial version, it will show the picture. So quite often schools have had to invest in separate picture software and that's then additionally applied to things like a network or made available for a website. Well, this is all here inside Immersive Reader in Office 365 uh, and you will get it available to you just by pressing the Immersive Reader button. So if I go back again, the next thing you can do is you could apply the translate option and depending on the pupils or the parents you have, you maybe have EAL pupils in the UK, you could have the text on screen display in different languages and the number of languages is growing all the time. Uh, it doesn't have every single language you may wish, but it has most of them and certainly again give the feedback to Microsoft if you know there's a language in here that you're struggling with in your particular school and you need it, switch it on. Once it's switched on, you can choose um, if it was going to be so let's say we're going to use Bosnian you can have it by word or by document and then what it will do is it will change the text you had on screen into their native language and it will also read it to you oh that one hasn't got a read aloud but some languages do obviously that one doesn't that's the first one i come across it doesn't uh but if it was something like french spanish german polish they will read in their native language you can turn it on and off by word and if you wanted to then you can go back and you can choose your default language back over as well so you can go back down and you can choose uh, english and you can put it back into english there english united kingdom so it's up to you and you can have that original text which was written english translated into the 
into the language it makes most sense for you so again it's about making it more accessible it's about ease of access it's about not making it difficult but also as far as workloads are concerned for teachers you could produce an assignment once or you could make a post once and then the pupils or the parents after you've shown them where to go can be self-service in the way that they'll apply those filters and they'll make it suit their learning needs so immersive reader is available in lots of different places if I jump back over to the presentation and it isn't just limited to Microsoft products although it is quite readily available in Microsoft products if I jump back over and go into presentation we've covered navigation we've covered all different tools so we'll skip through those really quickly we've also covered language translations it's available in the microsoft products on screen also in the grid that i showed you at the beginning if you need a web browser with it embedded in uh, there are other web browsers available but the new version of microsoft edge which is built on chromium is really good uh, i love it now compared to how it was previously i am converted but in there is immersive reader so if you need immersive reader for things like web pages it's there too it's also in the office lens which we'll look at in a bit and it can be in things like outlook so if you need to translate emails or you've got staff that uh, need emails in other languages it will take care of it in there the other benefits is microsoft is readily working with third parties and more and more and more that it's available in other products so for instance if you use it if you use nearpod for sharing learning resources or getting to pupils or getting them to work with you then translate is just available natively in nearpod like it would be in office 365 same with thinglink and wake that i know they're used quite frequently across primary and secondary schools so don't think just because microsoft own this product they're going to hoard it and keep it in office 365 they're not they are readily sharing sharing it and that mission that I said earlier about working with global organizations such as dyslexia organizations and making sure it's available to as many people as possible is is at the core of what they're doing so they want to make sure that it's not going to be a limiting factor if you don't have office 365 you could get to it just as easily in other products before I jump into the next part of the presentation which is quickly around office lens are there any questions on immersive reader anything you want to ask Feel free to unmute or you can pop it in the chat and I'll pick up your questions from there. See somebody's typing a question. Uh, do you have to turn it on? No, all you need to do is it's always on. You just need to look for the immersive reader symbol, which is the book with the little speaker on it. Uh, and wherever it is in whichever product, if you click that, it enables immersive reader and then it works. It's only in the updated edge, the Chromium edge, which probably came out in the last major update of Windows 10. So depending on how your network's managed, it may have been pushed out. It may not have been pushed out. So if you've got the old blue E, which looked a bit like Internet Explorer in Windows 7, but there was a version of Edge with a blue E and a line across the middle of it. It doesn't work and it's not available in that. You've got to have the new version of Edge, which has the turquoise E, and that's where Immersive Reader is embedded. So if you know you haven't got it, you put a ticket into your IT support company, whether it's Turn It On or a different company, uh, and they can get the new version of Edge rolled out, and then you'll have a web browser with Immersive Reader built into it. Any other questions? nope okay i'll just jump back over so next we're gonna have a really brief look at office lens office lens is an app that you can download on android also ios you can install it on your phone or your ipad and i know quite a few teachers put this on their ipads in schools and i use this instead of a visualizer i i can't cope with going to the classroom at the front of the classroom anymore bringing the people's book up i just have my ipad when i'm teaching or my android tablet depending on which school i'm working in on a day i have office lens on there and i walk around the classroom and i will capture the people's work in office lens 
And pupils can be self-sufficient in doing this with their tablet devices too. And it will convert written text uh, into typed text. It will also allow me using other bits of software to throw what's on the screen and mirror it, mirror it to the interactive board at the front. So I could be stood in the middle of the classroom. I could be working with a small group and I can be capturing it on Office Lens and then celebrating it with the whole class. The way that this Office Lens works is just like this demo. You go over the top of the text, whether it's written text in the pupil's book, type text, and then you've got the options of what you to do. You select immersive reader, and then it will bring it up on screen. It's captured by an OCR. Reads it, and then after it reads it, you've got all those accessibility options that you've got in immersive reader built right into Office Lens there. And as a pupil, I could adjust that text. So maybe you've given them a textbook. And the page on the textbook has quite a dense paragraph of text that people can't access it. So what they can do is they can use Office Lens, they can put it over the top and then. As you can see there, you can not only capture it and change the text from the book to suit on the iPad that you've got in front of you or the Android device you've got in front of you or the Microsoft tablet. You can then change it into different languages and so forth. So immersive reader and office lens go hand in hand. Office lens is free. You just need to get somebody who manages your tablet devices in school to roll it out uh, and then you can have it on there. There is a minimum version that is supported on. So it only goes back for so many versions of Android and it also goes back so many versions of iOS. Require Windows 10 on Windows 10 tablets, but Office Lens is really useful. And if you haven't actually discovered it yet in your school, I'd urge you to go and get it installed. As well as it being a standalone app, it's available in the new Office bundled app. So you can either get the Office apps individually on the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store, or you can get them bundled into the new Office app, which has Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, but it also has Office Lens in there too. So whichever way you get hold of Office Lens, it's quite useful for, for those purposes I've just described. Anybody got any questions about Office Lens? Pop them in the chat, or you can just unmute and talk to me if you wish. No questions? Okay. I'll move on again. It's going to my screen as it seems to come up a share. Okay, next we're going to move into PowerPoint and, and features that you've got in PowerPoint. They just make it a lot easier for pupils that you've got either in your classroom or maybe you've got a blended learning scenario where some are with you and some are at home or maybe you've got a complete bubble out or you've got a local lockdown and you could go to the tier. Uh, though they're trying to keep schools open, it may be that in the end we do have to close schools. But you can make sure that if you were sharing maybe a PowerPoint over teams or you were sharing a powerpoint just by screen sharing the the pupils at home or students can get into it and they can get the most out of that powerpoint and what we've got now are a set of tools that enable you to do that so powerpoint live so we're going to look at and with powerpoint live you have a QR code displayed on screen. I'll show you this in real time in a minute. And the, the pupils or students scan it on their mobile device or on their computer. And what they do is they join in the live version of the PowerPoint. It's available in PowerPoint. It's available in PowerPoint embedded in Teams. It's also available in Stream, which is the video app in Office 365. And it can enable auto captions there too. So without any further delay, I think what I'll do is I'll jump out of the presentation and I'll stop showing that screen and I'll jump over into PowerPoint in the demo version I've got lined up for you and I'll show you those features so I'll reshare my screen uh, and what I've done is I've gone from my landing page in Office 365 you can get to your landing page there by clicking the app launcher and Office 365 up there you could also go straight from the app launcher and open up PowerPoint so you've got with Office 365 all of the Office suite of apps here as tabs in your web browser and I've opened up from my PowerPoint a, a presentation here is my presentation and what I need to do is go to slideshow 
And then in slideshow, I've got two options. I've got present live and I've also got rehearse with coach, which I think we'll cover now, even though it's later on in the presentation, just because we're here. So if I go to present live, what I can do is I can choose whether it's only people in my organization, in other words, only people in my school office 365, or whether I want to open this up to anyone at all. So if you know that you're going to use present live with people that do not have a school email address, then that's where you choose anyone. If you know that there are all pupils in your class or staff in your school, then you can choose only people in my organization. I'm going to choose people in my organization. And then when I press present live, what it will take me through are the steps. And if you've got a uh, tablet device or a mobile phone, you hold up the camera, it scans the QR code, and then on their screen, it brings up PowerPoint Live. And what it does is it allows them to see things like captions displaying underneath. It allows them to see your slides being narrated, and it makes it more accessible for them rather than just passively watching your presentation is what would have traditionally happened. So then when you're ready, you go show slides and for you it looks just like you're presenting a normal slideshow but for them they will start to see subtitles along the bottom and it also maintains the slide code at the top there if anyone else needs to join in during the session i also if i come out of that during this this uh, session here you can resume it and go back in or you can end your live session if you want so if you know you're just ducking out to go somewhere else just resume it and continue if you know you completely finished with it, hit end. and when you send hit end session, it means the QR code is no longer valid and active. So if you've got students that have taken a picture of that and think they're going to use that again at a later date, it means it stops it working and it stops them coming back in. Something else that's really good for from your point of view, and particularly if you're delivering pre-recorded lessons and recording them in streams using Teams meetings, which is something we covered on a previous webinar, you can use Rehearse with Coach. So Present Live and Rehearse with Coach is available in the online version of PowerPoint. It's also available in the updated version. So it's got the most uh, recent update packs in Office 2019. But you need to have Office 2019 or Office 365 desktop installed, which is the downloaded version of what we're looking at now, or use the version of Office 365 web app online. If you've got Office 2016 or below, those features will not be available and you need to get your school to upgrade and install the latest version of Office. Usually that happens at the point computers are rebuilt, but you might want to get, for instance, if it's set of pupil laptops and you're going to use this quite a lot, you might want to get Office 2019 rolled out. Rehearse with Coach is also quite useful. So if I go into Rehearse with Coach mode, what I get over here on the side is the option to start recording. And I'll get real-time feedback just about how my presentation is going. So if I go back a few slides, I'll press Start Rehearsing. And then it will use the microphone on my computer and it will start analyzing my voice, my pace, and it'll look at the text on screen. It'll give me feedback about the quality of my presentation. It might be good for you as a teacher and a professional, but it's also really useful for pupils or students that are making PowerPoint presentations because it gives them some coaching tips about improving their presentation to make it as high quality as possible. So I'm going to press start rehearsing. And what it does is it starts recording me. So I may want to talk really slowly and I'm Day. as I'm speaking this afternoon we are going to cover policies school processes and any other business and um, uh, I'm not quite sure uh, what's going to happen next and what it will do if I keep erming and erring is it will pick up that I am pausing and I might stop for a while and as I stop for a while, it will then say stop umming and erring or don't pause or stop using fillers. Or I might go really fast. If I start to talk really fast and say, here's the policies and we're going to go for annual review updates and new posts. And I want your input this afternoon. Otherwise, we won't know what we're going to do next. It will also take all of that voice analysis on board. And when you're ready to stop, you press the pause button and you come out of the presentation and what you will get on screen is a diagnostic um, dashboard of what you've been doing, the time that you were rehearsing for, how many slides you went through, your originality of what you're saying, uh, the sensitivity of the phrases you used. It will then just give you virtual um, virtual diagrams of the pitch and how fast you were going and the pace of your presentation. 
as I said, it's great for you if you got to do a lot of distance learning, if you're going into lockdown again. It's great, again, if you're presenting to parents because maybe you can't get them into parents' evenings and you don't do a lot of presenting in that way. But it's also really good for pupils to use in, in, in school as well. So you've got present live and that allows them to get captioning and change things like their languages so that although you're talking in English, the captioning might be appearing underneath in Polish or it could be appearing underneath in French it could be appearing underneath in Nepalese uh, but also rehearse with coaches a really good tool to get them to use online so there's two different ways there to get into those uh, those tools that you've got available to you any questions from that point of view about how to use those tools no anybody want to pop anything in the chat OK, when we oh no, somebody is typing something. Uh, does captioning come on automatically? No, it doesn't come on automatically. You need to enable it or enable the PowerPoint live. Otherwise, you've got to manually select that you switch it on in whichever application you're in. It's not a default that it will come on. And I haven't seen a default anywhere in admin settings to make that just come on when you open up the application in question. Any other questions? No. OK, we'll jump back over to the presentation for the next bit. We're going to move next into looking at writing and tools for writing, and we'll have a look at these in the presentation itself. Just reshare it. Here we go. So the other idea that you've got is if you're using Word Online or maybe you're using desktop Office 365 or Office 2019 for desktop, you can get suggestions inside of Office itself. And if you hit the ideas button on the right hand side when you're in the home tab or the home ribbon, I should say, it will start to give you ideas of words that you can put into text or formatting options or ways that you could present your documents easily. It's just a way of reworking sometimes what people find quite difficult is they will pop a load of text on a page or they won't think about the way it's going to flow. If you use the ideas button, what it will do is automatically give you suggestions to restructure that. It could be a piece of homework and they maybe haven't got a parent to talk to because the parent's busy either doing their own work or maybe they're not around in the house at that particular point. The ideas button can be quite useful for that and, and it's on the fringe of learning tools, but actually it's quite a useful one to dip into. You've also got in that same tab, you can enable languages. So it could be that you can have dictation rolling out and you can then dictate into word like some third party products would do, uh, traditionally you can dictate in your native language and it will appear on screen in that language but then you could convert it to different languages so here you've pressed the dictate button underneath the dictate button you can preview the languages you've got available again this is only going to be available in office 365 online or desktop office 365 or if you've got office 29 installed it's available in there as well but what you can do is you can talk to word or you can talk to powerpoint and it will then capture on screen in real time what you're saying it's been something that's only recently come out uh, but dictation and translation are built into those tools in office 365 so it, again it doesn't have to be a barrier that the the pupil finds it really lengthy process to type letters in using the keys on the keyboard they may not you they won't know how to type a word so if they don't know how to type the word then simply enable dictate and they can talk to word and it will still capture what they're saying and it will appear on screen and they've been successful in capturing what they need to do but they haven't had to have the barrier of the computer or the keyboard is being the thing that means they can't be successful in that learning You've also got word prediction in Windows 10. So if you're running Windows 10, I think most schools are now. If you go into Windows 10 itself, so this isn't in Office 365, and you go into settings, which you can get from going to the start button, and then there's a little gear or cog on the left-hand side in the bottom corner. And then you go into typing and you slide across the button that says show text suggestions as I type. And then as the picture shows on the right hand side, as you're typing, you'll get a pop up box that comes up over the top of Word and it also works in PowerPoint. And you'll have suggestions about other words you could use or if the, you've mistyped and you've got an alternative spelling that will also 
make suggestions about the correct word to use there but you've got to enable that in windows 10 itself it's been there quite a long time since some of the first builds of windows 10 but it isn't always switched on if you know it's going to be useful you might want to get your it administrator in the school to get that feature enabled and they can do that and they can apply maybe across all the pupil devices you may not want it on and staff devices but you've got as an option for you Next, we're going to have a look at maths tools. But before we do, is there anything about those two features that I've just covered there before we look at the maths tools itself? Just jump back into the presentation, check if anyone's asking any questions in the in the conversation section. Nope. OK, I'll move into maths tools again. I'll show you the maths tools in real time. I think it's probably easier. Some people that have joined previous demonstrations and training sessions, you may have seen some of these tools before, but I'm quickly going to recap it. So maths tools available in OneNote Class Notebook. You can use OneNote Class Notebook either as an individual app or you can use it from within inside Teams. And if you're using it inside Teams, uh, you can pick it up in your class team usually. So if I went into my class team here, I'm in a primary classroom. I'm going to go over to OneNote Class Notebook and using the, the session that uh, we used last time, I can go in here. I'm going to find a section. So maybe in my teachers only, I'm going to build myself in my math section a sheet, which I'm going to work on now, but I'm going to share it with the class at the beginning of the next lesson. So I'm going to go to maths have myself a new page and on that page i'm going to go to the draw tools haven't got a uh, a stylus here so i'm going to try drawing this in using a trackpad so this, this might be we're going to look at subtraction it types this afternoon and then no it's not going to type we'll go on so i might be just doing something really simple as i'm going to lose seven minus three equals and I'm either typing this into my computer I might be inking this onto my computer using the inking tools that we got here in draw or I could be even doing this or strut directly onto the board I'm going to go to the maths tool and as it says there I'm going to need to lasso this text so if I go back to here I can highlight my text then press the maths tool on the side it's picked up that I've got seven minus three, but I can use the fix it button to correct any any operations or numbers it doesn't pick up correctly or symbols. And then I go to the options I've got available to evaluate it. And it's quite simple here that I've just got seven minus three equals four. But I might want to see the steps to get to it. Uh, and there aren't many steps here, but if I decided to go back and make it something more complicated, you get more steps. There's my immersive reader symbol again. So it's here in OneNote that I can use immersive reader. It's built in in a lot of places. So if I needed to convert this into an immersive reader, whereas a pupil, I would click that. But with the maths tool, it, it mainly it's in number. This is useful. I click generate practice quiz and with the generating practice quiz i need to sign in here so i'll quickly do that it will detect i've already signed into office 365. i might want 10 questions in a similar vein i'm going to press generate quiz so microsoft forms does that generate quiz for me and then down here i've got a self-generated set of questions and again there's immersive reader so if these need to be read to the people as well doesn't have to be a barrier that they can't read the questions that have appeared suddenly on the page in the microsoft form they go through they could use a mini whiteboard and a pen next to them to complement the on-screen scenario they could use a piece of paper and a pencil if they don't have that at home they work out what the questions are they quickly go down the list and they type in their answers uh, and they go tick 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 and hopefully they answer everyone they submit it in and it says your responses were submitted I'm going to go and view my results and it will tell me which ones I got correct and which ones I got incorrect. And then I could go back to the solution step on the side here and have a look at how to find the answer. Or as a teacher, I might want to make suggestions on the page here and say, well, if you get really stuck, you can either come and speak to me. If you're at home and you're accessing this over distance learning, here's the bit from BBC Key Stage 2 Bite Size. Or here's, go, here's the exercise to go to in my maths or mathletics and practice, and it will help you understand what to do. And you can use not just Office 365, but you can link in the other platforms that you subscribe to. And you could have the link directly here on the page for the pupils to pick up. But the maths tool is really useful for being able to 
what is the workload for you? Because you're going to be busy in the classroom or you'll be even busier if this is a distance learning scenario. And whereas you might have been able to go around the classroom and go and visit pupils individually or group a table together for an intervention, it's not as easy to do that on a distance learning scenario. So having them being able to access some tools to be self-sufficient is really important. Just going to dunk back over to the uh, presentation here and in the presentation there's a few more maths tools that are important to show you and make sure that you can see so with the maths tool we've we've covered the equation tools uh, we covered the maths tool but you've also got equation tools in OneNote so as you can see from the animation on the screen if you in the online version of one that we hit the equation tool you can go in and you can build your equation here we're looking at square roots you can type them in so this is maybe more of a secondary scenario but you've got your equation builder and with that equation builder you can build some really complex equations and this can complement number work in the maths tool that i've just shown you but it means that you can build some equations either prior to the lesson or you can do it in real time with them on screen but those tools if you go into the equation there and select or you you then go on the left hand side the menu for structures you can work out your different structures to your equation you can pick it to build it in different ways you've also got the the math assistant which is what we've just used and that's the maths tool that's here there in OneNote in office 365 so not with that you've also got a, a graphing calculator and the graphing calculator is a separate app to plug in but this is more for secondaries and if you're looking at algebra you can use the graphing calculator and if you're looking at algebra where you're looking at values of x for instance you can start to model that in the graphing calculator and i'm not going to label that too much because i appreciate i've got a lot of primary schools here on the call but if you want to look at uh, getting the graphing tool installed and the graphing calculator installed it's a separate tool you'll need to get it installed also to emphasize at the moment it is still in preview which means it's been released to the general public but it's not a final build so there may be the odd quirk in that graphing calculator but i know it's available there for secondaries uh, fe and he in the uk and if you're outside of the uk you should be able to pick that up too so all of those are available to you and you can just go and pick them up we've looked at the math solver and the equation tool so really to pause at the end of the math section have we got any questions there that anybody wants to ask either as a question in chat or anybody wants to unmute and ask that too nope Okay, I'll continue on with the session this afternoon. So next, we're going to look at communication, and this is going to overlap with something I showed you when I just happened to be in PowerPoint earlier. But the PowerPoint coach, as I said, for various reasons, could be for pupils, them practicing to get their presentations correct, but also it's useful for staff. Uh, and that's only, as I said, available in Office 365 online or Office 2019. Um, the PowerPoint Live, this is an easier way of showing you what it looks like from the purpose of you signing in on your phone or your desktop device or your tablet you can see there if you scan the qr code once you scan the qr code you join the presentation but underneath there you can see the captions coming up and those captions start to display for you but you've got to use the presentation live mode and people have to scan the qr code at the other end or pick up the link which remains at the top of the presentation screen in case anyone joins or their device drops off the internet. And it means that your audience is synchronized up with you and whatever you're talking about on screen will be getting captions and subtitled as you talk and you talk around the slides, it will come up for them real time in the bottom, but it can be in other languages just because you're talking in English, it could be appearing for them in French at the bottom and it doesn't have to stay in English. The way you do that is you click the option there at the bottom to choose your language and then all of a sudden as you're talking and there's a demo of a slide it comes up and you can then 
get those slides and those descriptions and those conversations explained to you in your language so you can have greater access to the learning. At the moment, it supports 60 languages. Microsoft has an ambition to increase that and make it more languages. But what it means is the audience can be self-sufficient in navigating their choices on their own, and they don't have to wait for you as the presenter to change something on screen. They can use those PowerPoint Live options to change them themselves. You could also use a pinch zoom on screen. So if you needed to zoom in, you couldn't quite see that writing as it says, how do oceans work? And that, that text is quite small there because it's on the screen of a phone. You could pinch zoom in and you can also get closer to that text and change the orientation of your phone or your tablet device by turning it around. So there's lots of ways to customize that screen depending on what's going on and what you want to see. And that only then affects your version that you're looking at. It doesn't change it for all the other people that are looking at the original version. You can also use it if you're giving uh, presentations, you're delivering distance learning to get feedback for yourself. And people that have taken part and used the PowerPoint Live can then give written comments and they can also evaluate things like the content, the interaction with the audience and so forth. So if you want to, you can use that element, but you don't have to use that element. So just to summarize those, you can use Presenter Coach in live presentations. I'll quickly jump over and show you reshaping slides quite a few stuff find this one but just in case you haven't way to mix up your slides and also to remodel them without having to go through the pain barrier of reorganizing them yourself you can use designer so in designer if i jump back into my session and i go back over to powerpoint uh, and i come back in here i can go to design and in here i've got designer and it might be that I'm on this slide and you know what, it looks quite drab and boring and I want to, to make it look more appealing or I want the content displayed in a better way. If I hit the designer tool on the side, what it does is it looks at different ways to present that slide. So it might be that I quite like this one here. And instead of having my boring picture on the side, what it does is it remodels my slide on the fly. I've got the agenda there, the points I'm going to discuss, that's the picture there. I might then go to this and it will analyse to the design options. Well, instead of it being just a boring set of uh, bullet points there, I might want to change that and have some text boxes. And then very, very quickly, as a member of staff redesigning my content, it looks really different. It also may have more professional air to it because with the best one in the world, we're pushed for time as teachers. We're going to get some content onto a slide really quickly. Well, use the designer tool to, to make it look different, maybe look, at, look more visually appealing or, or remix something you've used before. And if you was that way one day and then you thought, well, actually, I, I did that to the pupils in the other lesson, but now I'm presenting to staff. Well, that's more of a staff uh, way of, of displaying things. And then tomorrow, or I might want to get it back to the pupil view where well, I can return it to the pupil view and you do it just by going to that designer option under design uh, and you can flip things backwards and forwards. Any questions on those tools before I move forwards again? No. All right. I'll just swap over back to the presentation. We've covered that. So with real time meeting captioning, this isn't available for everyone, which is why I'm showing you this as a video. So today I've gone to demo this to you and it's disappeared from my demo version. But uh, the couple of weeks previously it was there. So if you've got a Teams meeting going on, whether you're using the old version of Teams meetings like we've got on this animation on the screen here or the new versions, if you press the dot 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 ellipses in the middle of the meeting bar, whether they're at the top of the screen or in the bottom, just above where it says keypad you will see an annotation or a captioning option and you can turn on captions and then as people talk within teams meetings or if you were delivering a lesson over a teams meeting or you were even pre-recording a lesson over a teams meeting and you knew that you needed captioning on screen when it becomes available in your school on your office 365 you can get the the captions displayed on screen as i said it's just coming out of preview it's a fairly new feature and it hasn't consistently rolled out across all schools in all office 365s and that's what i wanted to show you on the video uh, just have to wait for that to appear and when it does appear you can start to use that it should be by the time we get to christmas consistently available across most office 365 tenancies whether you are dealing with uh, you've come to join this presentation from a business organization or whether you're joining us from an educational organization 
Another one to get uh, captioning is inside OneNote, and you can use the translator tool. So in OneNote itself, you can turn on captions, and as you can see from the uh, video on the right-hand side, uh, you you join your join code and you come in and you can switch on live captions on the right hand side and then although the text might be in the middle of the screen in English you can have that transferred into Spanish as the example is going to say here and that is using the version of OneNote built into Windows 10 on a Windows 10 computer but it's another way to use the translation tool and the translation tool is quite useful in its own right which leads me on to the translation app. You can get the translator app as a app on iOS or Android. I keep it on my mobile devices all of the time. Uh, it's also available as a website, and I'll go on to that in a moment. But you scan the QR code of the person presenting, so if you were the person joining it, and then you can have the conversations on screen. I know a lot of schools use this with parents. And if the parent isn't uh, somebody who speaks English as their primary language, and maybe English as their second or their third language, it can be really difficult to hold meetings with parents. And you want to do the best for their children, but also they may not understand what you are and what you're trying to explain to them. So you can use the translator app to achieve that. And if you get them to have the translator app or you can have the translator website on the screen, you can talk to them and it will appear for them in a different language. The apps at the moment handle 63 languages and that has grown since its conception and it will only grow further still. You can use it for delivering lessons also in Office, but it has to be Office 365 online. Uh, and as I've showed you there in OneNote, it will translate. So what does that look like in reality? Well, if I jump back over again and I stop sharing my screen for the presentation, and I reshare the other screen. I had PowerPoint uh, and here I come across and now it would be that I've arrived. The first thing I need to do when I arrive at Translator, so it's translator.microsoft.com. It, this is a free web app. You click and you log in with your school Office 365 account, so it will detect and then if you're starting, if you're joining a conversation, you get the join code. So as the teacher or the person initiating the conversation, you would get a join code that you can generate. So if I was joining as a parent, I would enter the join code. I would put in my name and I would hit enter and I would join the conversation. Or as somebody initiating the conversation, I have to say who I am. So I'm Mr. Long. My language that I'm going to be speaking in, I do want to indicate whether I'm using it in a classroom because it will give me some different settings if I'm using it for a meeting. I press enter and then it will bring me over to another screen where I can deliver the translator session. There is the QR code on the side to scan. There's my join code that I would have entered if I was a parent joining this conversation. So you, you can have this on screen. And you either scan your code on the side, and then because I've chosen for it to display in English, uh, it's going to display my conversation in English. But what it's doing is it's sending what I'm saying up to the internet and it's interpreting it. But if I'd have chosen this to be in Russian or German or some other language, it wouldn't display the box here as in English. It would display it in the native language that I needed it in and there it would come up in real time. So the translator tool can be a website. And you always get people to rejoin the, using the code out there. It can be an app, but it can also be built into other apps in Office 365, such as the Office Suite or OneNote. And it's really useful for getting, again, pupils into the lesson and meaning they can access what you're saying. And if they've just arrived in the country and actually haven't had a chance to even pick up some English, but they've come into your classroom the second week of being in England or Wales or Scotland, that they could then be partially successful in joining a lesson. And as long as they had a computer open on the screen, you went to this website, then they could be reading what you're saying in their language on screen and they could get some understanding of what they're hearing is English in your spoken word compared to what they're reading on screen in the language that they're picking up. Obviously, they need to be able to read in their own language, but you could also have it read to them too if you wish. So the translator tool is free whether you're going to install the app, it's free whether you're going to use the website, it's free whether you're going to get it into Office 365, but it is quite useful for meaning that, again, you've got greater accessibility to learning, which is all what our session's about this afternoon. Any questions on the translator app before I jump back over in the presentation?
No. Okay. I will move through again. So this afternoon, we've got various links that you can use to get to the Microsoft Education Centre. You're also going to get some uh, some of these awarded with the code you're going to redeem this afternoon. But there's a very good unit called Getting Immersive Reader Link, uh, and that will get you started. There's also uh, another uh, another course in there called Independent Learning, and that's using the Microsoft tools in OneNote. And there's also a, a session in there, which I haven't linked to yet, about using the PowerPoint Presenter Coach. And there's a link at the bottom of there, which links out to getting into PowerPoint Live. If you need to get to Immersive Reader, you can click the link at the bottom of the screen. All the Math Solver button is available as a website, as well as being Math Solver inside of the software there. So with all of those, you've got self-study courses that will help you just to get to grips with what's available for you and how to use it in your school. With these, you may find that you need to put some IT support tickets into your company to get them enabled or get them installed. But once they're there, they're not going to cost you anything you might as well make use of them so as far as today's session is concerned we've covered microsoft learning tools and next time we'll move into flipgrid before we move into any other areas of uh, finishing off this afternoon are there any final questions just as i'll stop sharing as well uh, about any of those elements we've seen in learning tools if there isn't i'll stop the recording and we'll do that now